Christmas music this morning. Joy to the world. Good morning. Good morning. Any good to be saved? Yes, it is. Amen. It's good to be saved and to know the Lord. Uh, no matter what's going on in this world, we still belong to God. Amen. I'm going to be in the book of Psalms, Psalms 55. If you have an old Schofield, that's page 625. 625 in the old Schofield Psalm 55, and uh, I, uh, I encourage you to read uh, this entire song. I, I certainly won't have, I won't read it all this morning. I want to read a few uh, excerpts from this psalm, uh, but I want to talk about uh, one of our greatest gifts that we have as Christians. You know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I talked about uh, the hindrances to prayer, the hindrances to prayer, things that come up that get in our way that cause us not to be able to pray or hinder us from praying. And today I want to talk about the gift of prayer. Amen. What it means to us, what it does for us, uh, it's certainly a great gift that we have. Just think about that for a moment, that we that are saved can talk to the God of heaven, the creator of the universe, the savior of our soul. We can talk to him at any time. What a blessing that is. Amen. Now, I know some people discount that. And they don't believe that. But let me tell you what. I've seen it in action. I know God works through prayer. The Bible said, pray without ceasing. Now, he certainly didn't mean, uh, you know, that we're to go somewhere and get on our knees and pray 24 hours a day. That wasn't what he was saying. We're to be in prayer mode all the time. Keep your heart ready. Keep your heart prepared. Keep your mind ready. Keep your mind prepared. Uh, and uh, don't let the devil, you know, throw things in there. Uh, and if he tries, then deal with it uh, uh, so you can keep the prayer line open. Amen. Amen. Keep the prayer line open, sort of like the uh, the party line that we used to have uh, back when I was a, a young fellow growing up in the mountains and we had a telephone. I remember the first telephone we ever got, uh, it was around Christmas time when uh, they came uh, to install the phone and I was uh, curious about what the man was going to do, so I followed him around uh, and it was snowing that day. I, I think it might have been Christmas Eve or there about uh, close, but it was snowing that day. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I was excited to have a telephone. Uh, but uh, we had what was called the party line. And uh, if you picked up on the party line, uh, you know, uh, somebody might be on there already, you know. Uh, and, and that's just the way it worked. You know, we didn't have a private line. So we had neighbors that were on there, and we all shared uh, the party line. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, you might hear somebody talking, you just hang up and wait. You know, they hear it click, they know somebody was waiting. And uh, there you go. You hear some interesting stuff <laughs> on, the, on the party line. Amen. But uh, listen, we got a line to heaven. Amen. We got a line to heaven. Uh, all right, uh, Psalms 55, and don't forget now, uh, uh, let, let me say this uh, uh, for all the folks on the, on the front row, November 21st uh, will be our Old Fashioned Day. Uh, November 21st. That's the Sunday before Thanksgiving, an old-fashioned day. And, uh, you know, the men that want to, uh, you know, uh, we come and, you know, usually, usually wear, our, at least I will, wear bib overalls. And, and uh, the ladies, if they want to, wear long dresses and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, we just do it as a, uh, you know, a nod to our ancestors, you know. I know everybody hates history today and they're trying to destroy it and create something new. Listen, we're here today because people decided they wanted freedom uh, to preach and freedom to pray and freedom to worship. Uh, and uh, they came here to do that. And we're here. Have, uh, uh, have we been without mistakes? No, we've made them. Uh, we've made mistakes, plenty of them. Uh, but there is not a human being on the face of this earth that doesn't have mistakes in their past. Amen. And what you do is you learn from them, you know. You can't go back and erase them out uh, and, and pretend they never happened. 
Uh, so, uh, November 21st, be uh, old fashioned day. After the morning service, we'll go to the fellowship building and, uh, you know, uh, we'll have a meal together. The church is uh, buying some chicken and potatoes and all that, but you, uh, you bring something, uh, a covered dish, and put something in the covered dish and bring it on. And, uh, you know, whether it be a dessert or, uh, uh, you know, vegetable stuff to go with the chicken and all that, we'll eat together. Uh, and then let you go. And then on December the 11th will be uh, uh, our uh, Christmas fellowship. Uh, that morning, uh, the men uh, gather, and we'll get here about 9 o'clock, meet us at the church at 9 o'clock, and we'll go out for breakfast together. And that will give us time to uh, uh, wait for Sam's to open, and then we'll go down to Sam's and get some uh, fruit uh, uh, and uh, uh, candies and all that kind of stuff to make uh uh, treat, bag, uh, treat bags uh, and uh, uh, baskets for the widows, and we'll bring them back here and make those up, and then uh, we'll give those out the next morning on December the 12th. Uh, the evening of December the 11th, we will gather in the fellowship building uh, uh, for our Christmas supper, and we want you to come. Bring something, bring uh, some food. Again, we'll be buying chicken and all that, but you bring something along, uh, add unto it, uh, and uh, the men usually bring... Uh, uh, you know, some uh, man's gift, not an expensive gift. Or you used to say a dollar gift, but you can't get anything for a dollar. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, something small, uh, and uh, we'll put the, your name on it, ladies and ladies gift, uh, and we'll put a, a number on it, and we'll draw numbers, make sure everybody gets something, they'll leave with a gift, amen. Now, even though it may not be a great, it's probably a flashlight or, or something like that, but uh, we split the ladies and the men because... Uh, you know, Andrew doesn't want any pantyhose, uh, you know. Uh, and so, uh, anyway, uh, uh, I've already got mine, and uh, I think, uh, you know, any man that gets it, hopefully they'll be able to use it and be happy happy with it. I, I got, uh, what was it? I got a pair of gloves last year, uh, and uh, I believe they came from Raymond, and, and I still use them, amen. I, I, I had to cut some brush around the house, and those... Uh, Gloves came in handy, brother. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, Psalm 55. And uh, to those of you tuning in by the front row, welcome uh, to the front row. Thank you for tuning in. As always, saved you a seat right here on the front row. Amen. Uh, all right. Psalm 55. Uh, let's look at verse number one. I'm going to uh, uh, skip read a little bit here. He said, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Uh, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, uh, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And then see if you can identify with this. I, and I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I would fly away and be at rest. Amen. So David is uh, listing his complaints. He's saying, boy, uh, I got a full plate, Lord. Uh, I got folks that are casting aspersions. Uh, I got the enemy that's trying to destroy me. I've got all of these things that are happening to me. Uh, and then in verse 16, listen to what he says. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Amen. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for your blessings. I pray that you'd bless the reading of your word now. Help us, Lord, to do your will. Bless these that are here today uh, and uh, honor their presence here. I pray that you would uh, touch hearts and, and uh, lift up folks, touch uh, folks physically. Uh, those that couldn't be with us, uh, uh, there's a great number today that are sick. I pray your blessings upon them and lift them up spiritually, Lord, and make them have a great day. Uh, lead God and direct us now in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. So David is relating his troubles. And uh, uh, probably, if you've been saved very long, you can identify with what David is saying, amen, in some form or fashion. Have you ever felt uh, like verse 4, my heart is sore pained within me? 
and maybe you had a burden and maybe you didn't even know how to describe that burden. Uh, maybe if you sat down with somebody, you, you couldn't really explain it in words, but you had a burden on your soul and something was kind of pressing you down. And, uh, you know, uh, well, the, the devil does that. That's the oppression uh, that the devil casts on us. Uh, and sometimes we get under that. Amen. And David said, uh, uh, after all of this, he, he told the Lord how he felt. Amen. And God wants to hear how you feel. He wants to know what's on your heart. He already knows, but he, he just wants you to uh, express it. Amen. And, and after all that, he said, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Amen. I, I'm going to call him at morning and the evening and at noon. I'll pray. I'm going to cry aloud uh, uh, and he will hear my voice. And, and verse 18 said, he hath delivered my soul. Amen. Listen, uh, if you're down uh, and discouraged uh, and it seems like the devil is throwing darts at you and, and you feel like uh, that your world is turned upside down and your heart is, uh, is sore pained within you and you feel like the enemy is on every side, you say, preacher, what I do? I call upon the Lord. Amen. Pray. And talk to God. Amen. God has given us a great gift, and that gift is the gift of prayer. Amen. The gift of prayer. We can pray and talk to God. You say, well, what does prayer do for me, preacher? Well, uh, one, that uh, prayer allows us access to God. Amen. When we pray, listen, when we pray, we are addressing the Creator. Amen. The God who the Bible said uh, spoke the worlds into existence. Amen. I, I, I read the other day where, uh, you know, scientists are always doing things uh, out in space, looking at things through these telescopes. And, and of course, I, I'm interested in astronomy and all that. So uh, it kind of catches my eye when they look at a new planet or or whatever, and they're looking for other planets that might be like our planet and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but... They talked about a planet the other day, and and, and uh, they said they hadn't figured out what was going on because uh, uh, it looked like it was exploding, but it was going so fast uh, that uh, the explosions were happening so fast they couldn't uh, 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 figure out why. Uh, it was rapid pulses, you know. Uh, listen, and, and I kind of chuckled to myself because I said, you know, uh, uh, we're not going to figure out the things that God has done. Amen. Now, now I'm, not, I'm not saying that we shouldn't look at those things. We should uh, and try to understand as much as we can. Uh, but God has a lot of mysteries, uh, amen, uh, uh, that we don't know about yet. Listen, uh, uh, Psalm 15 and verse 4, uh, the psalmist said, Their sorrows multiplied uh, that hasten after another God. Uh, their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names uh, uh, into my lips. Amen. When we pray, we're addressing the Creator. We're not addressing some false god. We're not addressing uh, uh, Buddha uh, or uh, some of these other uh, gods. We are addressing the living uh, uh, Creator of the universe. Amen. Uh, and only He has the power uh, to do uh, what we ask. Amen. Uh, you say, well, preacher, uh, uh, you know, will he do what I ask? Well, the Bible said uh, if we had the faith as a grain of mustard seed, uh, we could say to this mountain, be thou removed into the sea, and it would happen. Amen. Uh, and so that kind of tells us sometimes how lacking we are in faith. But, but it doesn't restrict God's power. He is able to do anything. Amen. The Bible said exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Amen. Now, when we pray, we're addressing the Creator uh, and His ability. Uh, Ephesians 3.20 said unto Him who is able to do exceeding abundantly all above all that we ask or think. Prayer uh, allows us into the presence of the Lord. Now think about this. In the Old Testament economy. Uh, they had the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, temple uh, tabernacle in the wilderness, and they moved it. Uh, a lot was involved with that. And then after uh, they uh, arrived in the promised land, uh, 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 Solomon built the first uh, temple. Uh, uh, and you can read all about that. And there was different courts. There was a court of the Gentiles, a court of the women, uh, all of these. Uh, uh, and then as you went further and further in, uh, uh, there was the temple. There was the uh, the holy place. Uh, uh, 
uh, where the priest went to minister as they did their uh, uh, ministering. And, and then there was the Holy of Holies that was inside, uh, uh, the very deepest part. Uh, and it only had certain things uh, uh, within the Holy of Holies. And the only one that went there uh, was the high priest. And he went there once a year uh, to talk to God about the nation. Amen. Uh, and, and listen, uh, he went there uh, uh, to pray and talk to the Lord. Uh, and as he went in, uh, you know, he had a bell on his toe so they could, uh, uh, around uh, his foot, so they could hear him when he went in. If the bell stopped ringing, they knew to drag him out because they knew he was dead. Uh, 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 but as long as the bell was ringing, he was moving around in there. Uh, but listen, uh, when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible said the veil in the temple uh, that uh, separated uh, uh, that holy place from the people, the veil in the temple was rent uh, from top to bottom. This meant that through Christ uh, we have access uh, to God. We don't have to go to a priest, uh, a ministering priest or a high priest. We don't have to go to them. Uh, uh, you and I as servants of the Lord, we have access to God. Amen. And we can pray and talk to him through Christ. Secondly, not only do we have access to God, but prayer is a great gift because uh, it's available to all believers. Amen. Now, just because, uh, you know, you, you may uh, uh, not have been saved very long, uh, but guess what? Prayer is just as much yours as it is mine. Amen. Prayer is just as much yours as it is mine. Listen, it's not just for spiritual giants. I read about in 1 Samuel chapter 1, the Bible said there was a woman that came down to, uh, to pray, uh, and she went to the altar, uh, and she wept. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, 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 the priest thought she was drunk. Her name was Hannah. And she was asking the Lord for a child. She didn't have a child. And her adversary was uh, provoking her about this. And, and brother, she was asking God for a child. Uh, and Eli the priest, uh, he thought she was drunk, but she wasn't. Uh, uh, she was uh, being moved by the Spirit. Uh, listen, she prayed uh, a simple prayer. Uh, the publican, the Bible said in uh, Luke 18, two men went to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, one a publican. Uh, and the Pharisee looked around and he said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like this man. I'm not an extortioner. I'm not a, a murderer. I, I give tithes. I do all this stuff. Uh, and the publican, the Bible said, uh, that he bowed his head on his chest and said, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Jesus said this man went to his, host, uh, his house justified. In other words, uh, just as though he had never sinned. Uh, what a short uh, but beautiful prayer he prayed. Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Amen. Listen, and it still works today. It still works today. Thank God it does. As I told you earlier, uh, uh, amen. I had some, uh, 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 Matt Thompson now is our brother in the Lord. Amen. And I praise God for that. Uh, uh, God had been dealing with his heart. Uh, and I told him, I said, Matt, the things you explained that's been happening to you uh, and going on in your heart and moving you, only the Spirit can do that. I can't do that. I can preach to you all day, uh, but it won't uh, do anything unless the Spirit moves. And I said, so this is the work of the Spirit. Uh, and uh, he said, you know, I think I'm ready. And we prayed together, uh, and he talked to the Lord and gave his heart to the Lord. And I thank God uh, people are still coming to Christ. Amen. Still coming to the Lord. I, I told him, I said, fair warning now, uh, the devil's going to come after you. Uh, because he hates God's people and he's going to throw uh, darts and he's going to do everything he can uh, 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 to make you uh, uh, doubt, uh, you know. Uh, and I told him, I said, you know, what? one thing you need to do is note the date, note the time, uh, and uh, note what we talked about. And, and I said, when the devil comes to you and tells you, oh, that was, uh, you know, a long time ago, it didn't really happen, it don't mean anything, you can say, devil, look, I wrote it down right here. This day, this hour, and this is what we talked about this is what I did uh, and God I uh, took God at his word and God's word is still good amen uh, listen uh, uh, brother uh, we're uh, uh, prayer is available to all believers amen uh, you should never feel uh, that you have no right to pray amen uh, uh, listen uh, 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 brother we have uh, uh, the right uh, to pray uh, in childlike faith amen uh, and prayer uh, needs to be exercised uh, we got to use it amen it's a gift but it won't do any good unless you use it 
Amen. Sort of like uh, somebody said there's a, uh, uh, a visitor that came to a church in Kentucky, uh, and uh, uh, he watched as uh, a, uh, an irate parent carried uh, a little boy out the door under his arm who was being unruly in church. And as they went down the aisle, headed for the back door, the little boy cried out and said, Y'all pray for me now. Amen. Listen, he, he knew what was coming. Prayer deserves to be exercised. Uh, prayer doesn't do us any good unless we use it, right? I tell you what, uh, sometimes I've been that little bro boy, Brother Wesley. Y'all pray for me now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Prayer uh, anticipates uh, an answer. Amen. It's a gift. Uh, Jeremiah 33 uh, said, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Amen. I think I told you all about this uh, 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 before, but uh, the missionary Helen uh, uh, Rosevere, uh, she was a missionary to Zaire uh, in, in Africa, and, and uh, uh, she told about a young mother uh, who was dying, uh, and uh, uh, she was uh, giving birth uh, uh, to a baby, uh, and it was taking the mother's life, and uh, 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 they needed a, uh, a water bottle uh, to help this child to keep it warm. Uh, and uh, one of the girls uh, at, that was in that uh, group uh, of uh, uh, this missionary's uh, people, one of the girls uh, had a water uh, bottle, uh, 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 prayed for a water bottle, uh, uh, and she said, we need a water bottle to keep this baby warm because we don't have an incubator. Uh, and she said, also, uh, I, 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 I pray that we would have a, a baby doll uh, for my sister because she really wants a baby doll and needs one, uh, but they didn't have one. Uh, well, they prayed that night. And uh, the next day, there was a, a vessel that came down the river, uh, and they dropped off supplies. And as they went through supplies, uh, they opened uh, a box up, and guess what? Uh, uh, it had in it a water bottle. Uh, and a little girl said, keep looking, there's a baby in there somewhere. And they opened it up, sure enough, there was a baby doll in there. Uh, and listen, God answered prayer. Uh, God uh, had uh, foreseen this, uh, and the church that she was out of, uh, the Sunday school class, sent these things five months earlier. It took it five months to get uh, down the river uh, to Zaire uh, and where she was at. But God answered prayer. Amen. God is still in the prayer answering business, amen. Uh, these items were packed away uh, 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 in England five months earlier. God knew what was going on, amen. And, and then prayer can achieve uh, the impossible, amen. Amen. If you don't believe it, ask Lazarus, who was dead, uh, and they said he's been in the tomb four days. Uh, he's stinking now. And Jesus said, Lazarus. Come forth, and he came forth out of the tomb. Amen. Somebody said if he had just said come forth, everybody who was dead would have came forth. But he called him by name, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. One day, uh, the Lord is going to call those forth uh, out of the grave when the trumpet sounds. Amen. And I believe we're living uh, closer to that hour. I don't know when Jesus is coming. He hadn't shared that information with me, and he's not going to. Uh, but by the signs that I read in the Bible and the things that I read about what's going on in this world, as we taught in Sunday school this morning, that uh, the Bible said in the last days it would be like the days of Noah. Uh, there would be wickedness, and men's hearts would be evil, and their imaginations would be evil continually. Uh, beloved, we're living in that day. We are. And I believe, uh, uh, with all my heart, I believe the stage is being set uh, for the coming uh, of the Antichrist. Uh, amen. You say, Preacher, you believe that? I do. Because, listen, uh, uh, it's going to take a while to set the stage because uh, his rule is only going to last seven years. That's a pretty short term. That's, uh, 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 you know, that's almost like a two-term president. Uh, but he's going to be a world leader. And uh, to, uh, seven years is a, is a short reign. Uh, the first uh, half will be pretty good. Folks won't uh, uh, notice too much. You know, They'll think everything's going along pretty good. Uh, the second three and a half years is going to be bad. Amen. Hell on earth, as it were. Uh, listen, uh, I beloved, it. Uh, 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 prayer achieves the impossible. Ask Lazarus, if you don't believe it. Ask the daughter of Jairus, who uh, uh, they came and, and said, Jesus, we want you to come. Uh, uh, Jairus said, would you come and heal my daughter? She's 12 years old. Uh, she's at home. She's dying. Uh, and Jesus said, I, I will. And he started
started going that way, and he got deterred uh, uh, by a woman with an issue of blood who had had it for what? 12 years. Uh, and the woman said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And she touched him, and Jesus said, who touched me? Uh, and Jesus uh, and the disciples said, well, Lord, uh, anybody could have touched you, all these people. He said, no virtue went out of me. And she came trembling and fell down and said, it was me, Lord. Uh, and, and brother, he sent her on her way, healed her of her disease. She had spent all that she had, uh, uh, the Bible said, uh, and, and couldn't be healed. The physicians uh, had taken all her money, her last hope was Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, and uh, uh, and then when they came, after this was over with, they came and told Jairus, uh, don't bother the master, your daughter's dead. And Jesus said, don't worry about it, just believe. And he went on down to the house uh, and they took him to the room and he uh, uh, he put the non-believers out, told them to get out uh, and he took in the believers with him uh, uh, and uh, he, he said, uh, 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 Talitha Kume. Uh, and I heard one preacher explain that who was a Greek scholar uh, uh, and he said what he really meant uh, what that means uh, uh, in the Aramaic uh, actually uh, uh, it means uh, little lamb uh, wake up amen and I thought wow what a nice thing little lamb wake up Talitha Kume Amen. Uh, uh, and uh, so he woke her up from her sleep. And the Bible said uh, uh, that Jesus told him, get her something to eat. She's hungry. Uh, and, and she ate. Amen. Listen, uh, uh, prayer achieves the impossible. Amen. Listen to this. Polycarp, uh, uh, who was of uh, uh, the early church, the first century church, uh, uh, and they persecuted the church. Remember, the Romans uh, put some in the dungeon, and they put some in the Colosseum, and they fed some to the lions, and they created crucified some and they tortured others. They did all kinds of horrible things uh, because they said uh, these Christians are dangerous. Remember uh, when Rome burned, uh, uh, the old saying Nero played while Rome burned. Well, you know who they tried to blame the burning of Rome on? The Christians. They said the Christians did it, you know. Uh, well, listen, they, they got Polycarp, uh, uh, who was 86 years old, uh, and they said, we are going to uh, demand that he recount, uh, recount uh, uh, his uh, Lord, and he wouldn't do it. Uh, and so they brought him out, and they built uh, they build a big uh, uh, platform, and they put sticks and, uh, and wood and all that stuff, and they tied him to a post. And they said, all you have to do uh, is uh, recount the Lord, we'll let you go. Polycarp said this, 80 and 6 years I have served him, and he has done me no wrong. How then can I blaspheme my King and Savior? Bring forth what thou wilt. And then he went on and he prayed, Lord God Almighty, Father of your beloved and blessed Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we have received knowledge of you, God of angels and powers of the whole creation and the whole race of righteousness who live in your sight. I bless you for having made me worthy this day and this hour. Amen. And they lit the fire. Well, they lit the fire and he said, Amen. And the witnesses reported that the fire began to burn up uh, in an arch around him. Not him, but burn around him in an arch. Uh, and, and so they uh, uh, they weren't satisfied uh, uh, with that. Uh, one witness said it surrounded him like sails. And uh, instead of burning, he seemed to glow like baking bread or gold being melted in a furnace. And when his captors saw that he wasn't being burned, they stabbed him. And the blood from where he was stabbed put out the fire. And then ultimately they relit the fire. But what a testimony. Amen. He prayed and called on God. He said, 86 years I've served him. He has done me no wrong. Amen. How shall I blaspheme my king and my savior? Amen. Elijah prayed on Mount Carmel. 63 words and the fire fell from heaven. Amen. Abraham prayed. He prayed for Sodom and Gomorrah. He prayed for a lot. Amen. Uh, uh, and you could go on and on with evidence of, of prayer that the Lord answered. Amen. Uh, and then prayer uh, uh, makes the kingdom of God uh, go forward. Amen. Uh, uh, prayer can be where we can't be. Amen. Somebody calls you from some place across the world or another part of the country and they're in need uh, and you can't get to them. Uh, well, you can pray for them. Amen. Amen. You can pray for them. Sometimes we're in the right place. You know, Cindy and I were 
coming from here the other day, going back up Cone Boulevard, and we crossed the bridge over Highway 29, and there was a man in a, one of these motorized, motorized wheelchairs who was uh, got, come across the bridge. He had been to Walmart, and he uh, 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 he was going down across the bridge, and he uh, uh, I was waiting for the light, and uh, he was going across, uh, going on down Cone Boulevard, but it was a steep incline, uh, and uh, he hit a hole or something, and that motorized wheelchair tipped, and he fell right forward on his face uh, in the road. And you say, what did you do? Well, I pulled over and stopped. And some other people coming uh, to turn off, uh, uh, they stopped. Uh, they didn't have much of a choice because I was blocking the road. I didn't really care. Uh, and, and I got out, uh, and I ran over, and some other folks got out of their car, and I ran over, and they, they had his little box and a little bag, and, and he had... Uh, he had some little frozen meals and, and uh, uh, a half gallon of milk. He'd been uh, getting some food, uh, uh, and we we had to pick him up. He didn't couldn't use his legs. He was like dead weight. But man, I tell you, he was heavy. He was heavy. Uh, but we got him set back in that wheelchair uh, and sent him on his way. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Amen. Uh, uh, and Brother Andrew, uh, uh, no matter who he was or, or what his condition was or what the color of his skin was. I didn't care because uh, uh, he needed help. Amen. Uh, and so uh, I, I stopped and, and I did what I could do. Uh, but sometimes we can't be in the right place at the right time. And what do we do? Well, we got to pray. We got to pray because God can reach Kentucky. God can reach Illinois. God can reach California. God can reach China. God can reach uh, the Middle East. He can reach Africa. God is there even though we cannot be. Amen. He has. He's, he is there. Amen. Uh, listen, uh, uh, there's a story about a preacher F.B. Meyer who was asked to preach aboard an ocean liner. And he preached, and in the uh, audience, uh, uh, he had an agnostic and uh, he, his, his, mes his message was on prayer. And there was an agnostic in the crowd, and he said, I don't believe a word of that. And F.B. Meyer said, well, that's okay. And uh, later that day, uh, uh, the agnostic thought, well, he would cause a little confusion. He saw a, uh, a lady sitting out on the deck, and she was asleep in a chair. And he thought he'd have a little fun. And he took two oranges, and he put one orange in each hand and went on about the, uh, his way. And later on, the woman woke up, and the agnostic passed by, and he saw this woman. She was eating one of those oranges, and, and uh, he said, well, I hope that orange is good. And she said, yes, it is good. God gave me that orange. And he said, God couldn't have given you that orange. I did that. Uh, and she said, you know what? I was sitting here uh, going to sleep, and, you know, before I went to sleep, I was praying, and I asked God, uh, uh, it sure would be nice if he would give me an orange. I would love to have an orange. And she said, when I woke up, I had uh, not only one, but I had two, one in each hand. So she said, you can think you did it, but God sent you to do it. Amen. Amen. God can do anything. And later on, that agnostic, I understand, uh, became a convert to Christ because of what he had witnessed. Listen, uh, prayer pushes forward the kingdom of Christ. So don't stop praying. Keep praying. Amen. You may get like David and you may say, uh, you know, uh, uh, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I would fly away. Sometimes we feel like that. Uh, but listen, don't give up. One day we will fly away. Amen. One day we will fly away. God will take us with him. Uh, uh, but the gift of prayer is a marvelous thing. You can pray anytime, anytime, any place. Amen. Let's stand our feet. Hope you got something out of the message. Uh, pray that God would have his way uh, in the lives of those that are sick. And uh, pray that the Lord uh, would uh, help our nation. We certainly need it. Uh, and as we go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, you uh, pray along with us. Thank you, uh, those that tune by the front row. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, and, and Lord willing, we'll see you next time. Uh, and uh, Brother Raymond, would you dismiss us, please, sir?